Gentiles in the back smoking a joint with Van Damme. I haven't needed my heart to thank Todd Gordon for giving me the chance to be creative and to book for you crazy bastards. And I, I was gonna take the high road and just say thank you and leave. Don't take the high road, Paul. But I have something to say to you! You see, I've waited a long time to say this to you, Eric Bischoff. But in case you don't notice, it's not Paul Heyman with his tail between his legs going to a WC. W pay-per-view! You are in our house, bitch! Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hide your wives, it's Edge! Nobody with a written promo has the balls to say this to you, but I have two words for you. Matt Freakin' Hardy! I almost forgot about you. Mr. Shoot Promo himself. Bounce, checks, ECW went out of business. Hey, John, on a personal note, from all of us just to you, since you want to shoot, cowboy. The only reason you are WWE champion for a year it's because Triple H didn't want to work Tuesday! Yeah, I was giving yeah, out about Cesaro, Cesaro swing. Man, I mean, yeah. Oh. Like, Jay was just like, fucking They were up to 30 by the time it was at like 8. But it was the same in the pub. It was 1, 2, 3, 4. And Jay was like, shut the fuck up. They were just counting. Like, wait, okay, 1, 2, Three, four, five, <laughs> six. Uh, hey, we can count to 10, you <laughs> fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking man. And what? When did they give up? What number can't they can't pass? Jeez, I, I don't know. It, it usually hits about twenty three to twenty five, and then they just cheer. Yeah. And then they start going three, four, five. So <laughs> <laughs> fucking hate wrestling fans. <laughs> Thanks for watching our Hotel show. Wrestling podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to OSW Review, the old school wrestling video podcast. Filmed in glorious grapple vision and encoded with blast processing, we chronologically critique wrestling storylines pay-per-view by pay-per-view. This is your host, your lovely Christmas Gansey, Jay Hunter. Joining me as ever, the Snake Charmer, Mr. Ozzy. Alright. And Mr. Back to the Bangin'. <laughs> V1. Alright. It's ECW One Night Stand 2005, and it's coming up right now.
motherfuckers! Healthy days are here again! Hi. <laughs> uh, it's crack lens, is it fun? Yeah, not bad. Like, yeah, the weather, the weather's getting good. <laughs> Jay, how are you? Bollocks. <laughs> uh, our boy Ma- Michael O'Grady asks, who won the game of FIFA? Today, it was a draw. Steve was Belgium, I was Madrid. It was a draw, first game, second game. I won 1 0 with a screamer. Fucking wonder goal. Wonder goal, Ronaldo. Gitsy ran up. Gitsy. And then it was pretty, very tight. <laughs> <laughs> but Steve has improved, so fair play to you. Well done. I have been eating more. <laughs> Got some feedback from the last two shows about Scooby Doo. Aaron Knien asks, why wasn't Scooby's ring name Crocodile Dundog? On the book and pay, man. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing Red 1990 says, Excellent, I love a good bonus episode. Classic Bleach dropping the belt without getting pinned. Yeah. yeah. About Heatwave 98, Stephen Turner declares, ECW ladies, bodies of Baywatch, faces of Crime Watch. <laughs> Tremendous response to our OSW review t-shirt. Uh, when you say t-shirt at OSW, oh, t-shirt.oswreview.com. Oh, but I would say t-shirt at OSW.com. That's completely wrong in all ways. <laughs> it's, it's, it's t-shirt.oswreview.com. Just buy them. Yes. <laughs> now. All of them. <laughs> So when you get yours, yeah, be super awesome. Send us a picture of it on Facebook or Twitter. Yeah, so let's get you up to speed towards one night and stand. A lot has changed. That sounds terrible. A lot has changed since we last left. In 2001, WWF had given the Attitude Era a fitting send-off at WrestleMania X7. The ECW and WCW invasion had come and gone, and the following year, WWE decided to split its bloated roster in two with a brand extension, where Raw and SmackDown had different rosters, which they kept separate for a while, anyway, and their own exclusive B pay-per-views, like Backlash would only have Raw talent and Judgment Day would only have SmackDown talent. Fast forward to 2005. Eric Bischoff was Raw's general manager, whilst holla holla, Teddy Long was SmackDown's. WrestleMania 21 saw Batista and John Cena crowned as WWE's top babyface champions, ending Ribleach (laughs) and JBL's reigns, respectively. Edge was about to feud with Kane over Lita, and Angle was getting all rapey-eyed towards Charmel. Oh, Jesus. He literally said he wanted to have bestiality sex with her. And I'm not just talking any kind of sex with your wife. That kind of bestiality sex. (laughs) I want to have bestiality with your wife. (laughs) I think he meant beastly sex, like animal, carnal yeah, sex. Yeah. Carnal. Yeah. yeah. Okay. With the success of 2004's Rise and Fall of ECW documentary DVD, RVD pitched and convinced Vince McMahon to do a one off ECW reunion show featuring ECW alums. Paul Heyman and Tommy Dreamer were tasked with organising the event and contacting talent. Heyman's also credited for pushing to use the old ECW music, the video graphics, the four camera setup, and not WWE fancy lighting rigs. You wouldn't see this today, but since this was a one-off reunion show, many scheduled talents weren't under WWE contract, so they were free to work other dates, which included Shane Douglas's independent ECW reunion show, put on just two days prior in the ECW arena in Philadelphia. It's called Hardcore Homecoming. On Franchise's show, you also had original owner Todd Gordon, Terry Funk, who refused to work for Vince's One Night Stand out of spite for killing and buying ECW. Who then went and did an interview crying, said he should have taken the money. Todd Gordon, Terry Funk, Raven, and most importantly, Cronus. Yes. (laughs) Yeah, a notable absentee from this fucking show. Reviews of it range from a shambles to fairly decent for the time. 
So in storyline, Eric Bischoff was angered to learn that ECW was getting its own reunion show and vowed to gate crash and ruin it, rallying anti-ECW crusaders from both Raw and SmackDown. WWE didn't do a great job building up the pay-per-view, showcasing what Vince thinks ECW rules matches are, which is garbage, garbage matches. Yeah. Stop signs, throwing people into trash cans, that kind of shit. I don't know, fairness, that's what the main event scene was in ECW. Like. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> 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 yeah, I remember watching it at the time and Vince kind of promoted it like he did put emphasis that hey WWE guys will show up oh, you should buy the pay-per-view you know mm. and that sucks you know as a like as a draw for the ECW pay-per-view and for the first 40 minutes of One Night Stand we'd see the anti-ECW Crusaders empty seats in a private box awaiting their arrival would they show up? I don't know, but my gut says maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, enough history lesson. Come on, let's punch it. It's ECW One Night Stand, June 12, 2005, in front of a sellout 2,500 fans paying an average of over $193 per seat. It's yeah. insane. Like, for these are hardcore fans, they're going to pay anything. Yeah, our bra Ian Tompkins dropped 400 bucks for his seat. Wow. Indomitable crowd chanting ECW. Tonight's commentator, Joey Styles, he's taken aback from the outpouring of love. Ah, uh, it's every it was fucking funny. intro show he comes out and has a bit of a cry. Yeah, that's a lot of that's put on. It's just more of a, I should be crying, so I'm going to try and force myself to cry. Oh my god! Me and OC are watching the live version, because fuck the DVD version, and Steve be one watching the DVD version. <laughs> Because there is alternate commentary later on from your boy. And it's epic. JBL does commentary. It's amazing. Post show. No, he's mic'd. I've wow. two pages of quotes. Like, That's good. It's magic. So it's he was actually good. It was Unlike worth them. watching, but there are you know, there's like sound sweetening, uh there's no licensed songs, so for every great thing you lose something else, you know what I mean? So Joining him tonight is a so much healthier Mick Foley, coming out to his Cactus Jack WWF theme. Smash cut to the old ECW opening credits and Paul Heyman voiceover to the old ECW Invasion song, Bodies by Drowning Pool. One of five bands Jim Johnson has on speed dial. <laughs> five bands, alright, guess the others. <sighs> Saliva. Yes. Drowning Pool. Yes. Chad Kroger. No, Nickelback. Nickelback. No. No. Jay doesn't care. We had this. Jay doesn't no, care. They, they, uh, we need multiple themes. Randy yeah. Orton's theme. No. M Motorhead. Red. Motorhead. Oh, Limp Bizkit. Boom. And Creed. No. Did they only have one song. They had one. Yeah. Nice it was a great song. It's the yeah. greatest of all yeah. the songs that they've ever had. He's still going. Like WWE is still using his shit now. Him. No, it's a him. Oh, Kid Rock. Boom. Well done, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I've never guessed him because I've just like seriously just wiped him from memory. Yeah. He did Mania's theme this year as well. Really? Ooh. I like that one he did there. You know the the Leonard Skinner cover. That was like a Mania there. Leonard Skinner. <laughs> what would you call him? Leonard Skinner. Did you call what you call him? Leonard. Leonard, yeah. Leonard. Lenny Skinner. <laughs> What's wrong with Lenny Skinner? <laughs> oh my God! You can hear the paint dry. Here comes the most boring man in the history of boring. Wow. Last storm couldn't fill an arena if you gave away free beer with free tickets. Our inaugural contest tonight is Lance Storm versus Chris Jericho. So first out is Lance Storm with Don Marie, who did a good job of hiding her pregnancy bump. She's looking old. She's like aged 10 years and 2 years. <laughs> well, in all fairness, she did lose Al 
Wilson. I'm <laughs> 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 oh, in her life. <laughs> And Joey gets over his history with tag partner Justin Credible. Ooh, that'll come in handy. And Mick mentions that Lance is treating this as his last match. And it was. His last WWE match, that is. Uh, Don Marie too. So, kudos. He's facing Lionheart Chris Jericho. Great to see Jericho in long pants, isn't it? Can I go through my devolution of Chris Jericho? Right? I feel very strongly about it. So, 99... You know, comes into WWF, long hair, awesome, you know, kind of shiny pants, all that kind of thing. Look cool. Then we go to long pants and bob. So that's what we have currently. So then we had long pants and the shave those sideburns haircut. So this is like 2007. Then we had speedos and shave those sideburns haircut. Then finally... We had Speedos, Shave Those Sideburns, Haircut, and The Disgusting Knacker Tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> like, to go from 99 to 2014 or 13 or whatever. Fuck, yeah. man. He looks so bad. Because the tattoo is the, his album cover. What is the it's most like generic? Or something, What's it? the most generic metal? Oh, let's uh, harden their uh, skull uh, wings. <laughs> Hawk, and there it is. Yeah. yeah. Fuzzy will never be over. Stop trying to promote them, for fuck's sake. State of half your book, mate. <laughs> uh, yeah, great to see him. First appearance on OSW. He's wearing his old Lionheart waistcoat and tights, but comes out to his Fed song. Yeah, ridiculous. Yes, Jericho had only spent three months in ECW before WCW snapped him up in August 96. Not really an ECW guy. Chris is one of those world-travelled veterans who made his name in Japan, Mexico, and WCW before coming to the WWF. Now, both Canadians here were trained by the hearts, not the good ones, <laughs> and buddied up pretty quick. Uh, in his book, Jericho notes Lance was the only other potential actual wrestler there. And they even had their first match against each other. In Smoky Mountain, they tagged as the Thrill Seekers, and they had some amazing music montage vignettes. Splice. <laughs> <laughs> Sexy workout. Hooking up with some hoochies. And they're like... Oh. Nice. It, it's, it's really... It's all Jericho, obviously. It sounds like a uh, fucking girls in cars type <laughs> shit. Like, nice. Uh, bumper cars at the carnival. Winning Scooby-Doo plush toys. Helicopter rides. Yeah. <laughs> and riding on a lovely horse. It, it's, it's the funniest thing Lance has ever done. Seriously. Kick off with a fish out of water standoff spot, which receives a standing ovation. Then we immediately get a she's a crack whore chant, just cause. Well, you know, because the fans don't want to watch. They don't want to watch wrestling. They want to chant. That's 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 it. That's, that's my next point. <laughs> uh, the, the crowd are just here to have fun. They're like feverishly excited and just dying to get their chance in. Yeah, nothing wrong with that either. Storm hits a delayed vertical suplex as the crowd chant, "Fuck 'em up, Landstorm, fuck 'em up." Holy shit chance for a dropkick to the neck countering Storm's top rope back elbow. And then we get a Candido chant, which is uh, Chris Candido. Lance Storm tagged and feuded with him in ECW. And uh, Candido died about six weeks prior to the show. Oh god, it was only that close. Hmm. Uh, uh, he passed, passed away from a clot, right? On the plane? It's weird, because you're only getting hearsays. But he died of either pneumonia or a uh, blood clot, as well as brother says. Okay. Jericho hits an Insigurian Tiger Suplex. Lance Storm replies with a thrust kick and a Calgary Crab. Storm easily denies the walls of Jericho by holding Jericho's calves. And Jericho just gives up. <laughs> it's amazing. That's it. That's the end of your finisher. <laughs> Fuck's sake, Chris. So the finish sees the second world sexiest man, Jason Knight, causes a distraction along with Don Marie. But Storm's kickout sends Jericho to the ropes, where Just Incredible cracks him on his bonds with a Singapore cane. And that seals the three at 7.22. And the heels celebrate all the way to Olive Garden. <laughs> the commentators censure Storm using heel antics to win possibly his final match. Sure, he might offend a few of the blue noses with his cocky stride and musky odours. Oh, he'll never be the darling of the so-called city fathers that cluck their tongues, stroke their beards and say, what's, what's to be, be done, done with this landstorm? <laughs> uh, 
uh, so what do you think, Gans? I thought this was fucking great. One of Jericho's best ever matches. Yeah, yeah, I said it. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I knew he'd be like... Eh, I didn't say a word. I was just <laughs> shocked. Jericho gets rollerball Rocco. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen his match with Sharp at WrestleMania 19? Yeah. Matches with, Benoit? with Ray in like 2009. Like that whole God, so summer series. Anyway, we'll yeah. go I'm telling you, this is fucking awesome. I find Jericho to be a little bit sloppy as a wrestler. Oh, he is, yeah. Um, he, I thought he was very tidy in this match. Kept up with Lance Storm, who's pretty much flawless. And um, I, I thought bit he was... Bit of a cunt, though. <laughs> bit of a cunt. Don't like him. Kills the business. <laughs> Did you know he already started shitting on Axl Rose? Or whatever, your NXT dude. Uh... The guy with the bus. Anyway, he started shitting on it already. It's like... Oh. He hasn't even he, debuted and you're already killing him. He's not going to be in the main event. He's going to be at the bottom of the card. And even if it's the worst thing ever, it's harmless because it's at the mm. bottom of the card. Yep. Lance. <laughs> <laughs> I really thought we wouldn't rag on him in this. Because we yeah. ragged on him in the last two shows. Like. You know he listens to the show as well. He's got fuck all else to do. <laughs> Except for a bonus fucking wrestling skill. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm trying to compliment him as well, by the way. I thought he was very, very good. He was. He was very good. And well done, lads. Fucking great match. That's all I have to say. I also really enjoyed this match. I wouldn't say it's Jericho's greatest match of all time. <laughs> I didn't enjoy the end, but it doesn't matter because this is a once-off show and interference doesn't matter. It's about getting the people out there and having a pop. It's definitely the best opener of the three ECW shows we've seen, and uh, surprise, surprise, Lance in all fucking three of them. He's a tremendous athlete and wrestler. Yeah, an enjoyable, fast-paced chain wrestling match, which popped the crowd. Very enjoyable. It's obviously the two have great chemistry and wrestle like they knew each other very well. Yeah, everyone's like a god in front of this crowd. Uh, would have loved to see this go another five or ten minutes, though. All throughout the night. It's great to see people who weren't employed by WWE, like Joey Styles, and those who were, were featured in a different light, like Jericho here. And, and, and this did him a world of good as well. Like, at the time, the king of the world was languishing in a mid-card baby face role, feuding with fucking Shelton Benjamin. Like, he'd turn heel and become Bischoff's sniveling bitch. The number one contender to Cena's world belt, put Cena over twice at SummerSlam and the Raw night after, and then sent packing from Raw. So it's kind of shit, like... Oh, that's right, yeah! Maybe I gotta please, bitch, you have to... Oh, man, even if you win, this sucks for you, you know? Yeah. Um, but he'd be back in 2007 with his incredible suit-clad heel persona that everyone, including TNA's Eric Young, ripped off from then on. Yeah. The maze was the worst, though. Jack Swagger's on. Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> At the commentator's desk, Styles and later Mick, mentions the elephant in the room, an empty private box awaiting Bischoff's anti-ECW crusaders, who intend to crash and ruin the show. Backstage, your boy, Pitbull Gary. I marked out, I was like, ah, oh, Jesus, it's Gary! <laughs> Man, life has owned him. He looks fucking old. God. Heel Hype points out that if you actually watch it back, I'll splice it. Someone behind the camera cracks open a beer while he's cutting his promo. It's the Pitbull Gary Wolf, and tonight it's already gone to the extreme. That's amazing. <laughs> Pitbull Gary throws to an ECW Remembers video package of alums who have passed away. Sadly, it's a long and not exhaustive list. Uh, Rocco Rock, 49. Terry Gordy, 40. Crash Holly at 32, which is odd since he only wrestled a handful of untelevised ECW I matches. Like, yeah, I, I didn't even know he was ever even in the company. <laughs> Much like the next bloke. Uh, original Sheik <laughs> at 79. Mike Lazansky, Pitbull Anto. Ah, Jesus. Uh, Jesus. 36. Big Dick Dudley, 34. And Chris Candido. Yeah, six weeks ago. Shit. Missing quite a few names here. Hmm. Eddie Gilbert, who ran the company as yeah. well, and Louis Spicoli. And, There's yeah. fucking way more. Hmm. Yeah, ECW superstars, what a freaking oxymoron. That's like saying a celibate priest. Yeah. Or a heterosexual Frenchman. 
Next up is the three-way dance, which is ECW's elimination-style triple threat, seen in Barely Legal's main event. And if you're watching live on Sky Sports, like Michael Matthews was, Sky Sports, the cunts, ruined this match by putting up a ticker for the whole match of Michael Jackson's not guilty trial verdict. On a sports channel? Isn't that what Sky News is for? Cunts. Yeah. Yeah. Accompanied by the Sinister Minister and Mikey Whipwreck, it's the Japanese buzzsaw Yoshihiro Tajiri. Also known as Tajiris. His opponent, escorted by full-blooded Italians Big Guido, Tracy Smothers, JT Smith, and Tony Mameluke, it's the Sicilian shooter Little Guido, a.k.a. Nunzio. Smashing kayfabe styles gets over that only the Guidos are actually Italian. I love that bit, actually. Making up the final part of the three-way dance is Billy No Mates, the insane luchador, now maskless, super crazy. Billy No Mates. (laughs) Mick presses on to get through reciting his notes until Styles just talks over him. I'm going to read this regardless of if you made the same point. I was like, oh, Jesus. We have a bit of a horror show on this. Um, yeah, it's nice to hear Cactus, but yeah, Styles does not need a colour commentator. Immediately, Nunzio is thrown out so the other two can have a one-on-one. Your favourite. I timed it. 18 seconds. 18 seconds. Well, like at least the right person was thrown out. Super crazy switches out and you two do some spots. Swap you for Tajiri and let's brawl outside. Super crazy hits a balcony dog moonsault taking out the FBI and gets a rightful standing ovation for it. That was fucking mental. No! Oh my god! Oh Dios mio! Oh, really cool. The crowd chant in Spanish for the 10 count turnbuckle punches. This is why they call him Super Crazy! Can we take one more look at that? There we go. And was it in time, Jay? Oh yeah. It was really impressive. I would love it. I wish if we did it, did it in Irish for like Seamus's ten chest hits or something. What is the Irish? A Hainan. Camp. Now I'm stuck. Are you serious? A doe, a doe. A three a car, a coup, a shot, a knock to the knee, a death. Well, there you go. Hey. Uh, <laughs> Learned Irish in Dublin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was just, like, virtually no one in Dublin speaks Irish. To Jerry, um, sticks on the uh, Tarantula. <laughs> very good, very good. Have you heard everyone's um, Marge Simpson impression? Go on. It's amazing. <clears throat> Homer Simpson, you fucking animal! <laughs> amazing. It's Robo Garda. Tajiri uses the green mist on Guido, and Whipwreck hits the Whipper Snapper, which is a Brett's Rope Super Stunner. And the buzzsaw gets the three, eliminating Guido. Super Crazy hits two moonsault splashes, but Mikey stops the third. And then there's a botched sequence. The, well, what were you going to do in the ring? Awkward wait. Uh, and the fans immediately get on them about it with you fucked up chance. But Crazy hits a third moonsault splash and gets the win in 6-12. So I thought again, yeah, very, very enjoyable, fast paced sequence, just big signature spots. It'd be impossible to list them all out because there's no rest spots and they just keep going full throttle until the finish. I was, the match was way too short. I thought there's no point having the FBI. I would have loved to see a, a super crazy Tadgers match. I think it would have been awesome. Sinister Minister. So that's um, like TNA. James Mitchell. So yeah, he delivers the worst low blow ever. What is, what's the catchphrase, Steve? Is it a rub followed by a squeezy squeezy? A quick rub followed by a squeezy squeezy. Yeah, it was almost on those levels. Of, <laughs> of shit, like. Hell, Luke. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the match, you know, I, I enjoyed what, what for what it for what it was and would have loved another five minutes. Spot on. Um, I, I thought that the main point of this match was to get the WWE fans used to seeing um, Super Crazy, who they just signed and was going to come in and get a push. And... Uh, Good job with him, because he was the best thing about this match. So, overall, good job. But I've also got bars for all of these guys, if you want to. Oh, shit. Steve! (laughs) What bars are Tajiri, Little Guido, and Super Crazy? 
Great that you asked, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tajiri is uh, wearing uh, black, red, and gold. I can't say Mars Bar because the two best friends picked that in their last episode. So, big two fingers to them. Mars Planets. Whoa. Oh, I Upches. love it. Upches, boys. Nunja, he is wearing, uh, obviously, green, white, and red. He's a packet of meanies. Mm, yeah. Uh, super crazy, who's uh, purple, black, and gold. He is a twirl. Or, if you want to be topical, he can be WrestleMania 30. Mm. Mm. Uh, sorry, and I've also got one for Mikey Whipwreck. Uh, he, Jay, is actually a packet of crisps. <laughs> He's a packet of Banshee Bones. Ah. Yeah, two Irish crisps in there. Yeah. yeah. Do you like it? Jeez, the recession's hitting hard. B E W E W R U E and I need a beer run. I need to go to the B A R. Where? I need to go to the B A R. Match number three is our extreme lucha match. It's Psychosis versus Rey Mysterio Jr. Or Psychosis. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> he has some kind of goat mask and removes it, which is a show of humility and respect in Mexico, but gets booed out of it here. Why do you think he did it? I mean, was he close to retirement at this stage? He was signed, right? He was jumping from the show to SmackDown roster on his fucking lawnmower. Like. So I'd imagine Vince wanted him to take it off. Mistake. He's Why? a fucking gremlin. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously enough, immediately they get put the mask on chance. Mm. <laughs> Who's that jumping off the boat? Oh. R-O-N. <laughs> Rey Mysterio. Oh. My knee is blown. <laughs> so if you've ever seen Lucha Libre, it's... The, Not this. Yes. It, 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 like it's more of it's a, a bit of this. It's like the opening minute, because the, the opening minute of this was shit. It's just them holding hands. Yes, exactly. No, no, no. Lifting you up. Yeah. Luch is much better than this. This was shit. This was <laughs> them doing some kind of terrible ballet here. You know, I know Lucha is shit. more of a dance <laughs> rather than a fight, and that's fine. But this was that oh, was god awful. This was just bad Lucha. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Quite embarrassing, really. <laughs> There was one nice spot, you know, that they're doing all the, I'm going to hold your hand. <laughs> uh, he lifted him up onto his shoulders and he did like a oh. vic- victory roll pin-up. Not a breakfast roll. Breakfast roll, roll pin-up. <laughs> pin <up. laughs> a lot of sloppy reversals and the crowd turned on it as well. Ray goes through his high-flying repertoire and Psychosis returns with a rest hold sleeper and the crowd shit on him. Sleeper hold now by Psychosis. Now this is, a, this is really Sakosa straying away from his normal M.O. And then he's like, <laughs> and then <laughs> releases it immediately. There was so much rest holds in this. Like the match was only like six minutes long as it was. And it's like four minutes of rest holds. Like Ray wasn't bollocks at this point, was he? No, he's fine. You know, he only had like eight surgeries on his knee by this point. He wasn't quite Kevin Nash like. Styles tries to cover it, saying Psychosis, he's he's trying to go for a different style to combat Ray, and it was it was a bad choice. <laughs> Psycho guillotine leg drop from the top turnbuckle to Mysterio, who's draped over the steel guardrail. It gets them back into the fans' good books. Psychosis spots a pretty girl in the audience and takes a shoulder bump into the ring post all the way outside over the guardrail and onto her lap. I love that shit in wrestling. You know, when like, there's a hot chick and it's like the wrestler's like, throw me on top of her tits. <laughs> It'll be the tits. <laughs> no, it was no Marky bump. No, God, no. no. 619 gets shit on. Yes. And here we go, he's dialing it up. 619. It was a WWE invention. Yes. But the West Coast pop springboard Hurricane Rana gets a chair and the win at 6.22. i just like to point out that the D- DVD at that point was sweetened to fuck. Like, it had that change in audio, you know, where it's obvious that something has been changed. Like, uh, they, they didn't add in cheers. They just lessened the booze. <laughs> <laughs> so while... Ray came back 2014, and now pretty much all wrestling fans have caught up. ECW fans hated him in 2005. I hated him in 
2003, so... I had two years and everything. <laughs> yeah. You've been giving out about him I, for over a decade. Non-stop giving out about this cunt. <laughs> Top five most hated wrestlers. Is it because he can't cut a promo or because he does the same moveset? Both. Uh, more the moveset because he's supposed to be... I've seen what he's capable of and just can't be bothered. Or won't or isn't allowed. I damn, don't know. damn steroids, Steve. Yeah. He got too yeah. fucking big. Yeah. He just physically couldn't do it anymore. And his knees, of course. Although, bit of praise, he did have an incredible match with Chavo Guerrero. Like, you know, Chavo's like a decent hand, but he's not one for having amazing matches. I remember Chavo went up to the top rope and had like fucking Ray over shoulders and did like a top rope jumping gut buster. And I was like, holy fucking shit, Chavo. Did not know you were capable of this, like. So that's a bit of love for Chavo there. Yeah, yeah, not Rey Mysterio, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Rey was Chavo dragged him out of the match. Why, thank you, Steve. <laughs> Um, overall, another fast-paced, short, fun match, but it's a prime example of not knowing the crowd and completely booking it wrong. Like Psychosis removing the mask, the Lucha spots at the start, and the decision to change his offense type were all a miss, as was WWE's Rey Mysterios and his fucking 619 showing up. If they opened the show, it would have been a bit better received, but not after the last two matches, like Jericho making an effort and the Nostalgia Axe, so... Fuck both of you. <laughs> um, I thought this match was meh. Um, absolutely nothing special. Didn't think either men looked particularly good except for the guillotine leg drop which popped the crowd and looked safe. Uh, eh, move on. Yeah, thought it was shit. Probably, I probably thought it was worse than you thought it was. Um, I'm glad the crowd shit on it. Because... <laughs> Vindication. Yeah, yeah, exactly. A decade. I marked out. 41 minutes into the show, the SmackDown Crusaders arrived. Decked in blue polo tees, Kurt Angle, JBL and his cabinet, Orlando Jordan and the Bashams, and some other mid-carders arrived to take their seats. Serenaded with You Suck Dick Chants and Fuck You SmackDown. What an awesome crowd. I saw JBL's cabinet in there, Orlando Jordan, the U.S. champion. I don't believe we can repeat that chant, can we? It was great. I was like, oh, there's the Bashams. Remember them? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did it annoy any of you guys that Kurt Angle is wearing a fucking SmackDown t-shirt? It pissed me off. Because JBL is not wearing a SmackDown shirt. Mm. Mm. You know, Bischoff's not wearing a Raw shirt. Yeah. JBL does get right up in to the camera and shout at Ray and goes, I got a ticket, you little Mexican! (laughs) (laughs) Which I fucking marked out. Hilariously, Styles asked them to roll some ECW footage to stop giving the Crusaders airtime, and they do, for about four seconds. (laughs) Some roadkill Danny Doring promo that they just cut right out to again. We get another fun ECW video package showing mostly clips from before Barely Legal. So Austin, Benoit, Taz taps out, Douglas within five minutes. Uh, I thought these video packages do a great job of having a quick breather between such fast-paced matches. And obviously they're great to watch because it's like the history of the company condensed within, you know, a few minutes. Steven Steve's wet dream, the quintessential stud muffin, yes. Joel Gertner. Kurt pushes over Joel, and then JBL runs up and gives him a toe up the hole. <laughs> a full force. Cheeky toe up the hole. A cheeky toe up the hole. That's two from the same match. The rubby rub and the squeeze yeah. and squeeze and the toe up the hole. Holy shit. So Kurt cuts a promo on the relentless hostile crowd who chant, you suck dick, Adam. You suck dick, you suck dick, you suck dick, you suck dick. Your mother taught me how! He admitted he sucks dick. <laughs> the crowd barely let him get his damn and freaking promo out, drowned out by shut the fuck up chants. JBL gets the same treatment and asshole chants. 
JBL cuts an awesome, a great promo insulting the fans who sit down on their little internet typing I'm hardcore to each other and takes credit for the success of One Night Stand. He's cut off by Fonzie and Rob Van Dam. Oh, it's a fucking fed song. It's not the Pantera walk or yeah. Tilgore's walk or even yeah. his original fed song, which is a bit harder. What difference would it make if he came out to walk once? You can dub one of a kind on the DVD. Mm-hmm. Rob's sporting a knee brace due to his knee surgery to repair his ACL and meniscus. JBL has some phony mic troubles and gets cut off. Uh, it's difficult to do it justice, but RVD cuts his best and most famous WWE promo ever. So his most famous promo in history. He rebuts JBL and says he hates him and his likeness are on TV when he wants to watch wrestling. He lambasts his shitty whatever, cool, WWE creative penned promos. And then he goes through his ECW run saying it was the best time of his career and recounts pitching the pay-per-view to Vince. And missing One Night Stand 2005 is worse than missing WWE's Japan Tour, Booker T's Wedding, And coming in last, Wrestlemania. (laughs) What a great promo. Absolutely killed WWE selling this show. It's amazing. Actually, RVD was also legitimately pissed off that WWE had non-ECW guys at the event, the Crusaders, who would all get a pay-per-view payday for showing up, which would eat into the paychecks of the actual ECW performers. I hope they got fuck all. Like, there's Maven there, for Christ's sake. Yeah. Fucking Rob Conway is there. (laughs) You look at me. <laughs> when RVD um, talks about uh, nobody is writing this promo and this is all me, JBL just quick as a fucking whip is like, damn right, you can tell this is your promo. It fucking sucks. <laughs> just like you're wrestling. <laughs> RVD, what a linguist. He's like, Billiam Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking amazing. And uh, when RVD is banging on about it, he's like, I held the TV title for blah, 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 two years, 17 months, whatever. And uh, JBL was like, and how many TV stations were you on, Rob? <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful thing, this JBL going there. Amazing. A bunch. I need, we're getting a bunch of beer. I refuse to be sober during this. No, please, kill me. Are you sure I'm not in hell? This match will completely kill my butt. I was drunk before I came out here. Cue for Rhino to break up the love fest and the lights go out. It's Sabu! He looks battered. Holy shit. But lots of like little band-aids covering fresh wounds from wrestling Douglas and Funk on Hardcore Homecoming two days prior. And a ref enters the ring and yeah, here we go. It's Rhino versus Sabu. Rhino, of course, is the last ECW and television champion. Uh, he get immediate you got fired chance. <laughs> Story time. <laughs> Cast your minds back to WrestleMania 21, which would be two months prior to this. It's the post-show party in the Universal Sheraton Hotel in California where all the wrestlers are staying. Rhino at the time was getting divorced from his German wife and they had a loud public argument in the hotel lobby. Oh, I remember this, yeah. In in the lobby. (laughs) Don't, don't spoil it, you (laughs) cunt. You're getting cut, Steve. (laughs) In front of fans and the press alike, he angrily picked up and smashed a flower pot. (laughs) WWE shit canned them the next day. Yes, fired by a flower pot but to his credit I'm sure it was a large flower pot (laughs) would you happen to have a list of the shit Randy has broken by any chance next to this Uh, you know how he hasn't been sacked I'll have you know I freeze my turds before putting them into (laughs) the bag A stiff chair shot to Rhino and successful springboard splash kill off that chant. Sabu capitalises with a springboard somersault planche, a top rope frankensander, slingshot leg lariat and a whisper in the wind. Rhino's throat smacks the chair on his way down. That's a great spot. At which JPL says, oh what talent, look at the talent. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> Nasty receipt as Rhino trips Sabu and he lands face first into the chair. Time to go home. Goro Pee Wee the ref. Rhino hits the pile driver. And RVD throws a chair into Rhino's face, capitalising with a Van Sarah Connor to whole fucking show chance. An Arabian skull crusher, a top rope leg drop with a chair through a table. And the crowd erupt in ECW chance as Sabu captures the three in 6.30. The faces point to the sky and we're done. And did you see Sabu? He was pissed off about something. He's just, what the fuck? Um, wanna give him props? Not one botch in this match? Good fucking man. Uh, JBL leaves his best quip of this match till the very end. After he does his uh, Arabian face buster to the table, he says, Well, folks, when you have the athletic ability of a cross-eyed penguin, that's what you got to do. <laughs> um, but anyway, the Van Sarah Connor, uh, that was the, the only noticeable or notable spot really in the match for me because what the fuck is RVD doing? That can't be good. That's, I, that shows how dedicated he is to ECW. I want to do a move. You probably should. I want to. I'm doing a move. Do you know? Yeah. Mm. Like, considering his like knee was completely yeah. torn apart. Like. It seems a little biased that the commentators don't chastise the faces for cheating. Because Orvidee's not in the match. And Fonzie, you know, helps out throw his chairs to Sabu and stuff. You know, but they hung uh, Lance Storm and the Kilroy gang out the dry. <laughs> It's but this is I consider this a a friendly pay per view as in yeah I would like the first match was strange that there's interference and there was a bit of, a bit for the rest of it but it's it should just be a bit of fun I'm pretty sure there's interference in every match oh is there okay yeah. well that's a problem maybe but, not during Eddie Benoit but the rest of them definitely there shouldn't be though I mean this is just a bit of fun to entertain the crowd a one off they're not building feuds here mm. a, a hard hitting matchup where Rhino took the absolute majority of the bumps so I thought maybe because Sabu was knackered after killing himself at Hardcore Homecoming and worked up to Sabu's signature spots with uh, chairs and tables it's a reunion show so like much like a nostalgia act it's just all the big hits and everyone's happy uh, didn't, so like no story but it was a ton of fun I have to say like well, after after watching a lot of original ECW, like I would be marking out this a lot and all those crazy spots, but I uh, saw all the crazy spots for the last two pay per views, exactly, and they yeah. were crazier. Yeah. And each match was kind of twenty minutes, kind of thing. Yeah, you know. Backstage is Al Snow, <laughs> who blames his mannequin head for giving the Crusaders the green light to come tonight. He says tonight's for everyone who made ECW for what it was, not a bunch of Smackdown assholes. I thought that was really funny. Yeah. Mm. Cut to another ECW video package showing more fun memories. Every time someone went to a table, JBO would say, that's talent. <laughs> It's time for our ad break questionnaire. What is the greatest rock band on earth? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday comes again. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday comes again. Quick, Steve. It was a quick smoke. Yeah. Fucking Hoover lungs over here. <laughs> <laughs> what is the greatest rock band on earth? The answer.
is Creed. Even though it's not. <laughs> <laughs> For the purposes of this outbreak questionnaire, the answer is Creed. <laughs> oh, Christians. <laughs> I don't think people hate Creed's music. They just hate that they're... They hate the idea of Creed. Exactly. I would hate the idea of Creed, but I got into them before I realised they were a Christian rock band. And they also have some awesome songs. They've got some great songs. Mostly awesome yeah. songs. But the duck today. <laughs> <laughs> we all live under a wonky, wonky, wonky. <laughs> which, which, for those who don't know, is a three-legged donkey. <laughs> <laughs> One hour, twelve minutes into the show, the Crusaders, headed by Eric Bischoff and main wrestler Edge, arrive. Hilarious, the fans are continually shouting fuck you to Bischoff and flipping him off. And one fan, Ripple H, sprays beers all over him. And he didn't get kicked out. Oh, fucking decked him. Oh, yeah. That's like the, mm. the most disgusting thing. Don't spit on someone. Mm. And at the back of the brigade are Regal and Snitsky. And then we see my boy, Coach, and Rob Conway, a.k.a. Use Ligamy. Man, I love the look of the Manhattan Ballroom. The golden balconies and that, and it's I just think it looks really classy, it's very cool. Too nice for ECW. This is like just the opposite of Lance Storm. I want some tail, darling. Some cocktail. Holy shit, man. Uh it's the crippler, Chris Benoit versus Eddie Guerrero. Both wrestlers come out to their current Fed songs, Benoit with Our Lady Peace and Eddie with his heel Lie, Cheat and Steal song, having turned heel two months ago. The second Benoit walks out, JBL is like, what are you doing out here? You're with us. You make money, Chris. <laughs> yes. Benoit spent a little over seven months in ECW in 94 and 95, and Eddie just three months. Styles lamented never being able to have this matchup in ECW, same with Jericho Storm actually, and also puts over WWE's main championships, and also how fitting that these two wrestle on a canvas, as both men are truly artists of their craft. The way these two look at each other, you can sense something's off here. Like... It's also awkward trying to read Benoit's facial expressions. Just I just see murderer now. I, I, I that's not meant to be a joke or anything. I look at him. I just see an evil fuck. Like I, this is maybe the second or third time I've seen Benoit since it, it happened. Like, and uh, I, I get the creeps from it. Like, yeah, I, I'd agree. Well, actually, I watch Benoit all the time, and I'm fine with it. But it was just weird in this setting because we we're going to review it. It seems. A lot different, and just, I don't know. Um, seems quite ominous, but at the time, Benoit was pissed at Eddie over something who was clearly preoccupied with something else, and this would be five months before Eddie died. Like, Eddie just looks cranky. You know, he's not playing the heel, he's just kind of pissed off, doesn't want to be there. Mm. After Warrior died after Mania, there was lots of talk that kind of looped back onto Eddie, and supposedly for like the last six months, he was getting really tired during his matches and uh, blown up and then backstage he'd be in a fucking fury because he was pissed off that he couldn't kind of do do his part of the match and uh, maybe that's what we're saying like you know he's walking out going ah oh, balls I'm wrestling fucking Chris tonight he's gonna fucking go 90 like maybe yeah. It, yeah. standoffs trading chops and stalling to start off but Oh man, this is it really annoyed me initially. The fans chant towards the Crusaders, the you fucked Lita and she's got herpes. I was like, shut the fuck up and watch this match. JBL said the exact same thing. He said, uh, look at all of these fans paying their money to not watch wrestling and chant. He doesn't care for these fans at all. Like, I had no issue with the chanting of the fans. They were having fun. 
but this for me it went stepped over the line I mean it's it's, it's essentially they were starting a fucking Mexican wave yeah you know? yeah mm. But JBL, isn't it hard? They're, they're having fun. This is the greatest honor. Me and Taker finally got one. A Mexican wave. Why is everyone JR? <laughs> it, 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 I, I've been trying to not do JR in my uh, John Bradshaw label voice, but it's just JR. You, you do a great uh, JBL. <laughs> we fought on Friday night, mega. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Can you say any other sentences in that accent? No. <laughs> <laughs> Mustard choppy. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah, this part aside, in general, I think the Crusaders, aka those WWE cunts, made for a much stronger show. Like, they're perfect antagonists for the ECW crowd. It gives them someone to spew their venom at and shout, mm. You suck dick at. Oh man, Eddie just puts on a rest hold and he just has a cup of tea and a chat with Benoit. Just no no effort to hide having a chat. This is the first quip of one Orlando Jordan of the night. And he goes, hey, hey Joe, the headlock is the best move in the night, isn't it? And Bradshaw's like, oh, it sure is. You know, he's just giving him go for it. But uh, he, he also then says, this is the opposite of Lance Storm. Was it? I thought this match was really boring, you know. JBL was loving this match because it was too fed, guys. Uh. And just, you know, like, any time he'd see, like, a chair or a table, he'd be like, oh, you're so talentless. But if you did a headlock, he'd be like, look at that wrestling. It's absolutely <laughs> amazing. It's like the opposite of Lance Storm. <laughs> Storm's all about wrestling. I know! It's, it, it makes no sense. He clearly doesn't like him though. Then we get a fuck you Bischoff chant as Coach hilariously covers Easy es ears. <laughs> Dip a toe inside and Eddie delivers a crunching superplex but misses a follow-up frog splash. Odd, since he turned heel, he started using the lasso from El Paso instead. You know, the Texas Cloverleaf. That's a terrible name. God. El Paso is in Texas anyway, so you can still call it the fucking Cloverleaf. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Benoit returns with a crisp bridging Northern Light suplex and his own superplex. Triple German and Eddie falls out of position for the Crippler crossface. Oh, mm, fucking hell, lads. Uh, eventually, Eddie taps Benoit winning by submission in 1037. Like, Benoit looked incredibly disappointed in Eddie after the match. He's just evil staring through him. JBL applauds Benoit's win. Uh, is that because he's a SmackDown guy? And this is wrestling as opposed to he's, garbage wrestling? He bangs on about these being talented WWE guys and how they can actually wrestle and they make money <laughs> like these ECW superstars. And then he goes on to say... ECW Superstars is an oxymoron like a hetero Frenchman. Then he goes on uh, just mo on a gay tangent and he starts giving out about the fans and says the amount of homosexual testosterone in this arena is huge. And he's standing beside Orlando. <laughs> oh my George. god. I know. And OJ spends the entire night going oh, good one, good one. Good one, John. Good one. That was a great one. Good all these gays and all. He, 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 so he must have been fucking fuming. Like, yeah. mm. Absolutely fuming. Poor guy. Mm. And then just to finish it off, JBL is like, oh, I can't watch this show sober. I want some tail. And then he turns around to like uh, Jordan and he's like, some cock tail. <laughs> what? He was pissed. He was absolutely hammered. Yeah. Jesus, man. And so then the girl comes to to, to like get the beers and uh, he, he just looks at the girl and goes, I want to see your butt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what did you think of the match? Really disappointing. I expected a lot. Uh, and these two should put on a clinic every single fucking time. The worst Benoit match I think I've ever seen. It's just headlocks and... Well, Eddie, I think, phoned it in, and Benoit just couldn't drag him to a good match. Uh, disappointing, the worst match of the night so, so far. 
I actually don't have a single point to talk about. So, I nothing this match. Okay. Yeah, I, I'd agree. Also, neither man made any effort to ECW whoop themselves or play to the crowd. Um, Eddie would go on to have his famous battle for custody of Dominic ladder match with Rey Mysterio at SummerSlam. Did great business. And tag with Batista before passing away that November. And then we cut to a really out of place WWE Vengeance ad featuring 2014. It's Batista versus Ripple H. <laughs> <laughs> Joel Gertner, he's back! And grovels to Bischoff for a job, who spit takes his beer at the premise. Oh, that's very cool to see Bischoff, JBL, all the lads, they're all getting loaded. You can see they've all got beers in, in cuffs. Uh, so he throws his beer at Gertner while saying ECW has no class. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> so that's the end of Joel. I'm sure you lads very sad not to get a he sleazy just promo. Was so underexposed in this pay per view. He should have been allowed to come out. You know, say early on, or even with, with oh, the show or something. Yeah, like, or announce the main event. Announce yeah. the main event. What the fuck? He's so underutilized. It's such a shame. Uh, yeah, he actually did get one at Hardcore Homecoming, though. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I won't splice yeah, and splice that. Yeah, no, please, no please, spicy please, splice please, now. Spicy. No splice for you, see. <laughs> done boring ya. I think that I should warn ya that girls get hornier and hornier when I come to California because I am the quintessential stud muffin Joel. I'm California dreaming and I leave the girlies screaming. Cause I'm a pussy licking demon! With vanilla flavored semen! That's technical wrestling! That right there! I swear to you! Briscoe's turned over his grave again, and he's still not dead. Our sub-main event is Mike Awesome versus Masato Tanaka. Us oh, is his name. Us oh, is his name. Six foot six and full of shame. The lads feuded in FMW. I believe it's pronounced DCW. Thank you. When Mike Awesome was known as the Gladiator before coming to Eastern Championship Wrestling as Awesome Mike Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> he picked up two ECW and one FMW World titles before hightailing it to WCW in April 2000. Alright lads, all of this is within the span of 10 months. <laughs> He joined the new blood as the career killer, throwing Canyon off the ready-to-rumble cage, but within months his own fell off a cliff. His new gimmick was the Fat Chick Thriller. <laughs> Not Matt Hardy's actual gimmick. <laughs> <laughs> a man infatuated with only Rubenesque women. Some ladies of considerable carriage. <laughs> By September he was that 70s guy. And here's where I got a splicey, splicey. The bus has been washed. <laughs> so you had the 70s bus. Yeah. And uh, by the time, instead of feuding with Nash and DDP, he's feuding with ICP and uh, Vampiro. And they, they sullied. Oh, he's the dude who let your man fall, isn't he? That's right. Yeah, Jesus. And he sullied, they sullied his bus. And then, you know, the next week it was clean. And the bus has been washed. <laughs> Which was as awful as you'd expect. January saw him join Team Canada as the Canadian career killer. And then, oh no, the filthy animals cut off his mullet. The source of all his powers. He came in with the rest of WCW's invaders into the WWF in 2001 as regular, just Mike Awesome, 
hated his time there and was quietly released the following year. Since then, he'd been working on the indies, including Court Barra's MLW and Japan, but he's back tonight at one night stand to rekindle his iconic feud with Tanaka. Who JBL is uh, convinced is his doorman. <laughs> so up on the balcony, the Crusaders, the Raw lads, pull an OSW Joey legend, standing up and turning their backs on mm. Awesome. I fucking loved it. Yes, mark out to that moment. <laughs> Mick Foley says, hey, let's give Awesome his due. Mike Awesome is a great wrestler. To which Styles retorts, ah, who gives a crap? <laughs> and uh, JBL says, uh, if I looked like him, which he does, <laughs> I wouldn't have Awesome on my trucks. The cheek of him. The fucking cheek. This guy but is it, not in terrible shape. <laughs> he's not in great shape, but he's not in terrible shape. He, his, his body wasn't in great shape, but he was in terrible ring shape. He gassed out instantly. Like It was quite embarrassing. Styles wastes no time going fucking nuclear, bitterly shooting on Awesome, absolutely lambasting him for leaving ECW for WCW, whilst Foley tries to reel him back in and call the match. Let me tell you about this Judas, Mike Awesome, and that's a perfect word, he's a Judas. First, let's give him his due, he's a tremendous wrestler, oh, a powerhouse. He's a rat's ass, all right, you know what? He took a $250 check up front Wait, and a million, $250,000 thousand check okay. up front and a million dollar contract to walk out of ECW and breach his contract as the champion. And the only reason he didn't throw down our belt on TV is because of a federal injunction. He's a piece of crap. He's a sellout. He's got no loyalty. He's a Judas. He's what he is. And I hope Masato Tanaka takes his damned head off with the dangin' bar. Uh, like, I never thought I'd do it, but I'm going to stick up for Mike Awesome here. WCW offered him $1.1 million to shaft ECW and come work for the big leagues, instead of not being paid in ECW. I, I wouldn't see it as being shafted. I would see it as, fuck Paul Heyman. He owes him nothing. He shouldn't be working for free. So the second you're not getting paid, get out and go to WCW and take your money. Like. Yep. Yeah. One issue, though, he was the world champion, yeah? Yeah, and WCW wanted him to bring the belt to Nitro and Medusa it into the bin. And, but he never did that. No. He came in and, ah, oh, the boss has been washed! <laughs> but Styles says here that it was because of a federal injunction from ECW. Rather, so it was a litigious thing why he didn't bring it on oh, okay. TV. Yeah, I was at, like, losing Mike Awesome, even though he was the ECW champion, that didn't kill ECW. But you know what did kill ECW is as soon as they signed with TNN, they lost Taz and the Dudleys. And, you know, they stuck around for three months you know, saying goodbye. But, you know, they fucked over ECW. If they didn't leave, they wouldn't have been in such dire straits. That's, that's the company's fault. That should fall on Heyman's uh, shoulders or head. Whatever the fuck. Head and shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, yeah, so Taz and the Dudleys don't get any grief for leaving ECW high and dry, but Mike Awesome gets fairly... Uh, I think he has a raw deal on it. Yeah. yeah. And this Mike Awesome controversy got the friggin' ECW belt on SmackDown, which would have never happened if he never did that. So, you know, yeah. here we go. Some positives for Mike Awesome. The fat chick thriller, Mike Awesome. He's facing Masato Tanaka. Quick exchanges, then we get the most awkwardly retrospective comment. Suicide dive by Mike Awesome. It's a shame he didn't succeed in taking his own life. Oh, jeez. Uh, How long would it be? 2007. Two years. <sighs> he must have felt awful. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, that, that line is horrific, mm. you know? Well, he wasn't to know, but he shouldn't say that stuff no. in wrestling because it happens often. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, definitely. <laughs> Fucking fuck. <laughs> Fucking fuck! Awesome bomb from outside apron through a table which is propped up on the guardrail. I was... Holy shit. You also didn't mention that it took him less than 20 seconds to do his take or dive. <laughs> I, I couldn't get it in. <laughs> like, you talk about one thing, he's already did it. Then a really impressive top rope splash. Awesome gets great height on it. Yeah. Real impressive. And in true ECW fashion, it only garners a two. <laughs> Tanaka no-sells a stiff chair shot and follows up with Diamond Dust, which is a Brett's rope flip into stunner, and a Tornado DDT. And he has him down! No, he does not! Oh! Yes, he does! Look at that chair! Tanaka's Three times up! a charm, but 
but Tanaka is up. He's up! He gets the boots up! All referee Jim Molino can do is look on. Because oh, it's all legal in ECW! The two continue to beat the absolute shit out of each other. So we get more sick chair shots. Oh, this was like the fourth chair shot of the match and there was like probably six more to come. Fucking disgusting. This is not in the fucking 90s. This is 2005. It's like finishing spots and other matches are just, you know, transition spots yeah. here. Sick top rope chair shot by that 70s guy. Swinging top rope DDT through a table and JBL mockingly tells him to kick out. We get an amazing fallback top rope awesome bomb through a table where he's like walks back off the top rope. It's like, holy shit. And obviously Tanaka kicks out. In disbelief, the crowd flip out and give a standing ovation. And uh, get a this match rules chant. And then Mike awesome, awesome bombs Tanaka to the outside through a table. Followed up by a dive. It was great camera work because it just stayed on Tanaka. So Awesome just crashes into view. And the ref counts to three. And Awesome wins in 9.52. Was it great camera work or was it a case of Awesome was supposed to set up the move. Camera would switch and you get a proper angle into it. His face when he like yeah. sees him come yeah. in. And he's like, he's oh, like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what do you think? Take out the moves through the tables. This is fucking horrific. They didn't interact with the fans at all. And there was no storyline. It was literally, I'm, I'm going to fuck you up until I'm tired. And then you're going to fuck me up until you're tired. And then I'm going to fuck you up a bit more and win. Obviously, I didn't have Joey covering up and telling the, the plot and kind of, you know, uh, making things just seem that little bit better. But with JBL pointing out every little thing, just going, look at him there, he's fucking knackered, he's bollocks tired, he can't even get up and all that shit. You really notice how horrific Mike Awesome actually was. And he was dangerous in this match. That, that first move to the table where he cracks the back of his head and then the, the three chair shots followed by the jumping chair shot off the top rope followed by a German suplex that he lets go <sighs> I found this match tough to watch really really tough I think we watched a different match did I think we did mm. I think I thought this was awesome I, I it wasn't a patch on the Heatwave 98 match um, because clearly the lads were 7 years older a bit slower they gassed earlier fair enough I thought it was fantastic i thought it was risky there were times where it's like oh shit what the fuck is he doing now um too many chair shots to the head it could have had the same effect with two chair shots maybe one chair shot even but um i thought they both fucking gave it their all and uh some of the like the finish i loved one thing i would say perhaps a, an element of psychology would have gone down quite well just, you know, let's structure the match rather than doing a shitload of moves. Like they did in Heatwave, they structure the match. But, uh, great match. Loved it. Cool. Like, I thought, without as with the others, there's no story, no rest spots. They just squeeze as many big spots as you can into the match. It's a, it's a flurry of awesome. They just run through their greatest hits, basically. And uh, I thought it's still a fantastic match. They kick the shit out of each other in a brisk fashion. It's also a different type of match using chairs and tables, so appreciated that. And Tadanka, Tadanka, Tanaka took an even greater share of abuse than at Heatwave. Mike Awesome bumped twice in this, you know. Of course, with this type of bone crunching wrestling style, neither were picked up by WWE, so you know, you'd need to be able to wrestle four times a week. And this style, you know, this is once a month kind of thing. And uh, tell you who can wrestle four times a week. Cronus. <laughs> <laughs> Randy Orton. Oh shit, it's 
time to address the Crusaders. It's Bob Ortiz. Do you see the theme song hits? It cuts to the entrance and it's like the ring announcer is there. <laughs> it's over there. It's Paul Heyman in his trademark black duster, baseball cap and headset. And he's in tears at the thank you Paul chants. Uh, Paul says he wasn't crying, it was raining on his face. <laughs> this is the one time on the show where I felt that it was real. You know, like we t- talked about earlier about Joey with his crocodile tears a bit. It definitely lo- looked real. Are you trying to tell me that the 122 times that Tommy Dreamer cries is not real? <laughs> <laughs> God, that guy. It's hard to do this iconic promo justice it's beautiful he tells bischoff that they're not at a wcw pay-per-view they're in our house bitch oh, that sounds terrible when i said <laughs> and then amazing bischoff just flips him off <laughs> it's it's great because he's just having a beer and he's like, oh, fuck you buddy <laughs> hide your wives it's edge to which jbl quick as anything but nobody here is married Sausage fest. Nice. <laughs> Very good. Edge having had an affair with Matt Hardy's girlfriend, Lita, which went public right after WrestleMania 21, which got Matt Hardy fired. Uh, well, that's a bit shit, isn't mm. it? And it was actually this legitimate heat he had, which transferred into actual heat and got him into the main event. So it's the best thing that ever happened to him. Heyman has two words for him. Matt freaking Hardy. <sighs> That's three words, boys. Yeah. And ev- everyone's and like, everyone's that, like yeah. that hurt. That, like, you know, the fact that he was saying towards these guys and they, they just like, that's three, you stupid cunt. Like. Since Cowboy JBL wants to shoot, he... Hila- oh, man. <laughs> JBL, uh, he mimics writing checks and it bouncing. <laughs> and that's uh, brilliant. Heyman contends, the only reason you were WWE champion for a year is because Triple H didn't want to work Tuesdays. That's the best line of any promo ever. Yeah. It's, it's so incredible. good. Yeah. It's so good. JBL had nothing to say. Nope. Nothing. Nope. He just, he did the, you know, if somebody gives you an insult and you go, ooh, yeah. that means I have no comeback. Mm. Yeah. He says, this ain't WCW, this ain't Raw, this ain't SmackDown, this ain't even WWE. This is EC fucking W. He flips off the Crusaders, bows to the loving masses and leaves. It's a just incredible promo. Just anyone watching wrestling at the time be able to recall this promo. Just yeah, no, it was awesome. It's not just what he says. It's I love when he gets up on the on the on Brett's rope. He kind of puts his head out, you know, half and half inside outside the ring, leaning out of the ring. It was captivating. Mm-hmm. You know, you couldn't look away. He's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, my Durango. Can't run a company that far. <laughs> Uh, ad for Rob Zombie's The Devil's Rejects. That's one you recommended to me as well. Yes, uh, it's quite disgusting. I actually don't think you'd like it. Like it's it's not bad, but I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna put my seal on it. Mm. And is there a sequel? You there's a sequel. No. That is no. the sequel. The first yes. one, is House of a Thousand Corpses, yeah, which I wouldn't recommend personally. Yeah. Um, I, I don't ever recall seeing non WWE movie trailers in wrestling events before. Can you think of that? Shameless. Do you reckon he, uh, he was on the phone to, to Vince and he's like, there's no way I'm giving you my song for Edge. And, and he's like, all right, if you give us a song, we'll fucking push your film real hard when it comes out, blah, 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 you know? In 2002? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, if you ever do a movie, <laughs> push, we'll push that shit. <laughs> Did Edge have that song for that long? Yeah, the man, 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 is that the man, worst man, song man, ever? It's fucking it's, it's up terrible. There. It's bad, isn't it? My little Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> One hour and 55 minutes into the show, it's time for your main event. Mean Gene, play us in. Yeah, my Durango, number 95. It's your main event tag match. It's the Dudley Boys. Sons Gertner, coming out to Powerman 5000's Dudley Boys theme. They're facing Tommy Dreamer, coming out to oh, the shit cover of Man in the Box. Twice of time. Actually, it's a better cover than the one he would have in WWE CW. 
CW. <laughs> <laughs> Dreamer. <laughs> Isn't that what you do Dreamer. to slag someone? Daryl. <laughs> Single tear. <laughs> Splice. <laughs> anyway, it rolls right off his back. <laughs> uh, we have quite a quiet entrance for this, isn't it? Like, mm. no, no one cares about him. It's Tommy Dreamer. JBL is also feeling the same as us. The second Dreamer walks out. He goes, that's the main event. <laughs> But, uh, man, he already had a contract, so good for him. And Tommy Dreamer is tagging with the Sandman with the entrance of his career. It's fucking incredible here. Look at my... <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with the entrance? I got the fucking dubbed version. The oh. non-Metallica... Me, me, me. Steve saw the live version and it's fucking incredible hearing fans singing both verse and chorus of Metallica's Enter Sandman. <sighs> they don't miss a beat, like, it's just perfect. If you're ever going to pay for a song on DVD, that this is the one. Yeah. JBL loved this entrance and uh, after it, he said, That was great, but now he's got to wrestle. <laughs> Um, that guy in the blue vest smashes himself with Sandman's cane. Uh, at ringside, he pours beers and drinks it, drinks it off Sunbird's tits. And Tommy does the same to Electra. <laughs> Chris Chetty and future TNA hardcore justice talent C.W. Anderson are in the crowd. Sandman defiantly spits the beer and wanks off his cane to the Crusaders before clearing his, no- his nose. What a knacker. <laughs> it, it was cool though. Mm. No? Mm. Yeah, like this is <laughs> this is all Sandman has to offer these days, an entrance. But yeah. a great entrance. The team's fist bump upholding the code of honor until the Blue World Order What the hell is that? Stevie contends that you can't have an invasion without the BWO and we're taking over, signalling to roll out the jobbers. Miscellaneous wrestlers who didn't get a match tonight enter. Well, so it's nice to get a little... A, a a little pay kid on. cunt comes out? Kid cunt. <laughs> Styles the cheeky shit announces Kid Cash as Mr. TNA. Total non-stop attitude. Then Balls Mahoney and Axel Rotten Clearhouse as Nova gets a chair to the back and a sick headshot. The, the meanie gets up to the top rope and in all fairness he does have a tough time getting up to the second rope and JBL quips That looks like a big fat monkey screw in a basketball Why don't you look at me you fat punk when you blew her Go find your porn star wife That looks like a monkey screw in a basketball him getting up there Don't let your body to science fiction you fat roly poly pig He clearly hates him. Like, the second he sees him, he just, like, this fat pig is out here. What the hell is he doing in the wrestling ring? Like, Using Jim Molyneux as a springboard, Kid Cash does a perfect jump off the top rope and perfectly flips onto the perfectly placed mob of wrestlers. Dudley theme to bell ring is 15 minutes. And Bubba and Dreamer are in the ring, and Salmon and Devon brawl on the outside. So, yeah, immediately Bubba whips out a cheese grater and Dreamer, he's ah, blah, blah, blah. It's fucking gross. Do a move. Ooh. A la barely legal, Dreamer does a move. <laughs> <laughs> Funk's Benny Hill spot with the ladder. That's right. I'm a Benny Hill spot. <laughs> 
A la Heatwave, it's a garbage brawl, tons of sick chair shots. Sandman's skull gets rattled, and then he does a rolling rock sent on splash, and then a white Russian leg sweep. I'm enjoying these alcohol puns. <laughs> <laughs> Never thought I'd see a frog splash by Bubba Ray, and then a figure four by Sandman. The Impact players Lance Storm and Just Incredible bum rush the ring and Credible hits a That's Incredible tombstone on barbed wire. The Beastmaster, Francine Kickstreamer, as Beulah grabs Francine and... Get me! <laughs> Actually, he had to break it out. Worked out well. Yeah. I, see, I, I, I didn't hear any of this in the show, so uh... I, I didn't know any of this happened. Like... Uh, oh, you missed all of his comments, yeah, then. Yeah, I missed everything. The second Lance comes out, JBL just goes to fucking town. I, I, I'm shocked uh, yeah. at this, right? So, comes out, and he just goes, Oh my God, you can actually hear the paint dry. And he's like, Can someone show me some grass? I'll go watch it instead of this. And then he says, uh, Lance Storm is the most boring man in the history of boring. And then he finished off with saying, Lance Storm couldn't fill an arena if he gave away free beer with every ticket he sold. Why the hatred? Hmm, that's a more J-O-C kind of thing. <laughs> it's just mean, isn't it? Linda Miles level timing has Beulah bottles. <laughs> doing a DDT on Bubba and she misses her cue so Bubba bumps and then she bumps in a, an appropriate time later yeah an appropriate amount <laughs> Beulah and Dreamer hug in the ring I wouldn't hug someone with that amount of blood on him mm, ruin your disgusting. clothes disgusting although they are married right yep good stuff also um, aged incredibly well as you know Pitbull Gary looks like 35 years older than in 98 she looks pretty much the same still still very pretty <laughs> 35 years old holy shit <laughs> <laughs> well you know he went from looking in his 20s to his 50s <laughs> there you go yeah everyone's science yeah? everyone's bladed at this point they take Sandman out with a double team powerbomb through a table and incapacitate Tommy with a 3D What's that? It's little Spike Dudley who convinces his half-brothers to add lighter fluid and send Tommy through a flaming table. Jay, did you see the amount of lighter fluid they put on this table? It was ridiculous. I was expecting the entire building to blow up. It's like Homer with the barbecue. <laughs> it's fucking... Uh, they put so much. But what happens though when somebody goes through a table, like Dreamer did, it just seems to go away. It just disappears. Mm. What happens? What the fluid gets eaten up really quickly by the fire, so it only has like a seven second lifespan. So you just have to power bomb through it as soon as it's lit. Or else the fire will go out. Yeah. Mm. Okay. And there's oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> just, just <a> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tommy sells it like Terry Funk, spasming. Dudleys get the three in ten fifty two. The Dudleys aim to pile drive Beulah, uh, they broke her neck, leading into Heat Wave ninety eight. <laughs> but Sandman <laughs> runs them off to revive Tommy Sandman calls for a beer which I thought was a, was a great segue you know? get me a beer screw the beer get him some plasma the man has the beer Steve Austin is here so Austin enters wearing a oh, hilarious XFL Las Vegas Outlaws jersey. Yeah. Was he pulling the piss? I didn't even cop that. Uh, Styles did, and he's like, I'm not making fun of that. <laughs> <laughs> he invites all of the ECW alums out of the ring for a beer bash. The locker room enters to White Zombie, and also Rob Zombie. Uh, yeah, I thought Austin was great here. He's having a laugh, smack-talking the Crusaders to get in the ring. So since you're so hell-bent on whipping somebody's ass... And you've been talking so much trash. Why don't you all turn around, get single file, and bring your carcasses to the ring and whip their ass? Turn angry, you gold medal son of a bitch. Pull that finger out of your ass. Get down here, Bradshaw, front and center. Here we go. Here we hey, go. You big here up, we son go. Of a bitch. Get Come on down. Buddy. I got something for you. These guys Fight. Let's have a fight! 
AEW versus Raw and SmackDown. Now what? Uh, as battle lines are drawn, the crowd spoils the last entrant. Well, it's Taz, but it's so lucky that that's what they were booking, and you got it because they were chanting like they chanted for a flaming table. I was like, imagine if we didn't have a flaming table. Yeah, <laughs> and like they're chanting for Taz. What if oh, Taz isn't here? Mm, yeah, you know, the state of Taz as well. Mm. Oh, he's fat. Mm. So at this point, you can't see it very well, but with all the rest are schmozzing in the ring, JBL scumbag bully. Gets behind the blue mini and absolutely stiffs the shit out of him. First blow is to the back of the he head. He fucking means every single punch that he threw. Because I was watching him getting into the ring. And he never takes his eyes off him. And you know, he's kind of pushing people aside. And he's just making his fucking way towards him. A fucking dirt bag. Like. Well, what's his problem with the blue mini? He's fat. Why don't you pick on somebody who can fight back? You know? Yeah. Why don't you go and throw a dig at Mike fucking awesome? Yeah. Like, this is the worst. You know what I mean? Like, you're supposed to trust the people you're in the fucking ring with, not get fucking punched by them in the face. Did you see his face? Yeah. It's gross. Yeah, he gets busted open. It's not a blade job. It just no. looks nasty. It's real nasty. And he also had, like, wounds from Friday's hardcore homecoming, so, Jesus. So, what was that all about? Uh, well, during Blue Meanie's WWF run in 99, the APA had a rep for stiffing guys, especially Bradshaw. But especially for her. <laughs> <laughs> Meanie made no secret of how much a bully JBL was over the internet, and Bradshaw finally saw an opening to get revenge. Meanie says they would have been around each other from lunchtime that day, and they wouldn't like each other anyway, but since they're there for nine hours together... And at one night stand, JBL was drinking heavily and just wanted to beat the shit out of him. Um, so both Blue Meanie and WWE rothered Meanie getting TV time than filing a lawsuit. So instead, WWE booked the BWO on SmackDown. They had a short run, uh, which included the Blue Meanie beating him in a singles match. Idiot. Should have sued. During the match, Stevie Richards gave him a stiff fucking chair shot to the face. Nice, nice. Like, that's not the last time JBL was a shit bag. Cause, do you remember? He Backer. also is like 2007 or was it 2008. He was also bullying Joey Styles until <laughs> Styles exploded and knocked him unconscious. He, yeah! He, he must have caught him with a lucky shot. Oh, I have no yeah. doubt. Uh, supposedly, people that were there said that JBL was turning and he turned into the punch. And it was just one of those one in a million shots but it's like that's all it took he fucking floored him yeah. and even if Bradshaw got up and kicked seven shades out of him wouldn't have made a difference the fact is you got knocked out by fucking get me yeah. <laughs> <laughs> end of story and yeah. would the, the boys in the locker room not jump in and say would you fuck off you gobshite he's Vince's boy right Don't they're, they're like golf buddies yeah mm-hmm. oh bollocks yeah ECW send the Crusaders packing and Austin asks Foley to bring Bischoff to the ring. Oh, did you see Sandman the alcoholic? He was off his tits and he was like, Austin, where's the beer? And he's like, here is the beer, Jesus Christ. It came early this year. Eric Bischoff is getting dropped to the ring. Here, Jesus Christ. And his Crusaders aren't even stopping to help him. Bring him down, Mick. Yeah, Bischoff takes a couple of different finishers. The Dudley Boys 3D. Benoit's flying headbutt. Oh, jeez, Austin's call here. Kill this son of a bitch! Ah, oh, jeez. And, uh, how are you to know? But, and raise 619. That gets booed. Yeah. <laughs> right. Less than two hours ago, there was a spot where he did this move, and it was the most hated move on the night. Damn it, D-Lo. Don't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> do the battered sausage. <laughs> do battered sausage. I like. I think Austin. He only knows the WWF guys. Yeah. Dudley's Rey Mysterio. What are you talking ben about? Rock. We were in ECW. <laughs> Integral. Both days. <laughs> <laughs> Cut that promo on Bishop and the promo. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like, if you did, you wouldn't have asked for a 619. Mm. Um, Austin asks a day's Eric what he thinks, responding with... Fuck ECW. 
Which is awesome. And gets a stunner for his troubles. The Dudleys hoof him out and the lads celebrate. It was weird that, fun and weird, like, Heyman, he made this concerted effort to have all of the ECW guys be the focus. Except for the end celebrations where it's all Austin. Yeah. Which is not an ECW guy. He's more closer to a WCW guy. Mm. Although, in all fairness, imagine if Austin wasn't there and Sandman played his part. <laughs> <laughs> There'd be no beer left for anyone. Which <laughs> would just be Sam. Um, so Sam, oh, it's hilarious because off... Uh, it's like just on camera but off microphone Sandman gargles AC fucking Debbie yeah <laughs> <laughs> and Bodies plays us eight which we haven't heard since the opening credits Joey Styles signs off for the paper I can't believe what I've seen it's the WWE Did you think all the show? It's weird. Uh, I'm going to have to give kind of two reviews here. Because watching it on the DVD with JBL uh, talking over it, as entertaining as it was, I think you're doing the show a disservice by judging it on that. I remember watching this live when it was on, and at the time, I fucking loved it. I don't think it's aged quite as well as some other ECW shows because it's kind of like just a show for the sake of having a show let's have a pop let's get the fans to have fun let's get everyone a payday let's get over but it doesn't change the fact that it's very very fun to watch uh, some of the things that I liked about it I thought Landstorm vs Jericho was a great opener be the best opener of all the ECW shows so far really enjoyed the triple threat um Super Crazy was awesome. I really enjoyed the highlight packages throughout the show. Heyman and RVD, incredible promos. Heyman's is fucking epic. Tanaka was pretty good. And Austin at the end. Uh, I actually didn't have any memory of that. And when he came in, I was like, ah, fucking Austin, yeah. And on to the bad. Psychosis versus Ray was not particularly good. Rhino Sabu was probably a little bit better, but not great. I thought Joel Gertner was misused on this show really badly. Mike Awesome. And main event was all right. You know, it wasn't much of a match at all. And just to end it off, headshots. Uh, far too many on this show. Great show. Absolutely 100% recommend that you watch it. Although, if you've got the DVD, I would recommend watching it normally first and then if you're going to re-watch it again then watch it with the JBL and I would say the show was two matches were great that's Storm vs Jericho Austin vs Tanaka it's particularly Austin vs Tanaka the two promos RVD and Heyman were obviously great considerably more so Heyman uh, the rest of it was okay I wouldn't re-watch any of the rest of it really it was quite enjoyable, Austin, the Austin stuff at the end. And I would say not a patch on Heatwave 98, but probably better than Barely Legal 97. So, highly recommend it. Do you think we were a bit spoiled having watched Heatwave 98 and then watching this? Yeah. Because this is basically a, it's like a rendition of Heatwave Heat 98. Heatwave, that, that's... Yes, Jay, that's actually perfect. It's like, this is them trying to redo that show and it could never be as good but it's still fucking good and yeah. hmm. um, i thought it was like a perfect reunion show all the important names big spots jam-packed fast-paced nostalgia fueled show highlighting the very best of ecw and um, because of this i didn't notice other big ecw names being missing like terry funk raven douglas cronus <laughs> <laughs> over yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Owing to the pace, it's a two hour, 36 minute show, but it featured 58 minutes of actual wrestling. Wow. Um, 
doesn't matter though, it's all about the entrances, all the performers, and that was tremendously entertaining. Um, I loved how it was shot, and it looked and felt very fresh, very different from WWE. Uh, yeah, it's no surprise, but I highly recommend watching. It's a buy on DVD level amazing show, and it's also no wonder that Vince had nothing to do with it besides bankrolling it, because it felt authentic and never to be replicated again, Dixie. <laughs> So, how did One Night Stand do? It was a rousing critical and commercial success, uh, bringing in 333,000, which is about 70,000 higher than the average WWE B pay-per-view. Is that world or is that domestic? World. Which is even more impressive given WWE's kind of shitty advertising. This was an undeniable fact. There was a profitable market and passionate fan base for ECW, but what would WWE do with it? Could this lead to possibly another reunion show? Or a possible resurrection of the brand? Nah. You probably know the answer. The answer's yes. <laughs> <laughs> but that's where our story ends for now. So before we sign out for the evening, let's bring it to the hold wrestling... Hold on, Jesus oh. Christ, you can't end like that. You'll have people fucking topping themselves. The story doesn't end there for now. You know, it's like, we're just finished this show. But that's what he we says. We are going to do the next show. one, like... But that's, that's what Jay says. We so. will return at some point. Yeah, you, you, uh, see, you see, you see, you see. A lot of people are stupid, like. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people are stupid. <laughs> so before we sign out for the evening, let's bring it to the wrestling is. Awesome. Segment. <laughs> <laughs> I got a ticket, you little Mexican. The amount of homosexual testosterone in this arena is huge. Oh my God, you can hear the paint dry. Here comes the most boring man in the history of boring. Wow. Last storm couldn't fill an arena if you gave away free beer with free tickets. ECW superstars, what a freaking oxymoron. That's like saying a celibate priest. Yeah. Or a heterosexual Frenchman. Or <laughs> well, a small big show. <laughs> <laughs> yes. B double E double R U N. I need a beer run. I need to go to the B A R. Where? I need to go to the B A R. This is like just the opposite of Lance Storm. I want some tail, darling. Yes, you know it. Some cocktail. It's ECW funded by WWE. Yeah. Jerry Douglas. He looks tall because he's next to Taz. He's 5'3. This is going to be a technical masterpiece. Yeah. That's my doorman. That's my doorman. Hey, that's my doorman. That's my doorman. Yeah, that's my doorman. Hey! That's my doorman! That's my doorman! Yeah! That's my doorman! Yeah! Where, where, where? Call a ambulance! Call nine, where, where? A bunch. I need, we're getting a bunch of beer. I refuse to be sober during this. No, please, kill me. Are you sure I'm not in hell? This match will completely kill my butt. I was drunk before I came out here. Treadmill! Treadmill! Somebody run Mike Awesome in and use one of his 93 finishes. If they make the black guy go get the table, I'm yeah. gonna be hot. Oh yeah, I'm gonna hot too. Ladies and gentlemen, you are winning the match! When you have the athletic ability of a cross-eyed penguin, that's what you have to do. <laughs> did we pay for our tickets? Can we get a refund? Yeah, I, I think we did. I want a refund. The match is still going, the show's still going on. I did not enjoy myself. <laughs> but that'll do it for this week, folks. One night stand is in the box. Out of sight. In the box. We'll be back next time with One Night Stand 2006, so stay tuned for that. Remember, you can watch all of our videos, fuck, free of charge, and an IMAX flavored 4 to 3 full screen right here at youtube.com forward slash OSWReviewHD. Like this video. Leave us a lovely message on our Facebook page at OSWReview.com. 
Special thanks to Luke, Rory and Davin at File Driver Wrestling, our boy Chris Maffei for the theme song, ReloadLastSave.com, and at Viz vs. The World for their talents. And a special thank you to everyone who bought our t-shirt, you fucking legends. You can too at t-shirt.oswreview.com Exclamation mark. Bracket. <laughs> you can too. Oh. You can too at t-shirt. Bollocks! <laughs> you ruined the word t-shirt, t-shirt. Steve. Um, when you get it, send us a pic via our Facebook or our Twitter at OSWReview. So it's a goodbye from Mr. Ozzy. Really? We will. Uh, <laughs> and myself, Jay Hunter, and remember. Blip! 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 A winner is you. Oh, I love it.
this match is a huge opportunity for Rhino, but he's going to have to regroup and get back in the game real quick or it's going to be all over. You've got to admire Judge Jeff Jones, who was vocal, complaining about not getting enough airtime and not having an important enough role here at Extreme Championship Wrestling. He made himself one. He is managing the new undisputed World Heavyweight Champion, and from the looks of it, it's going to be a long time before anyone takes that belt off of Mike Awesome, because right now the Rhino is being manhandled. Line from the top, hook the leg, two and a half. And Rhino's showing lots of guts and lots of determination just to be able to kick out of that top rope clothesline. The champ going for the awesome bomb gets back body dropped. Spine buster by Rhino, this may be off. Two count only, Awesome kicks out, and now the challenger, Rhino, taking the fight for the champion, Mike Awesome. Awesome set for the ride. And Rhino charges, and we've seen it before, he gores heavyweight champion, Mike Awesome. And now it's the 285 pound Rhino going up top. We haven't seen this yet. Diving headbutt to the small of the back. Lateral press. Gets it to two. Rhino with those heavy right hands. Delivered to the head of the champion. Full head of steam. Awesome gets the big boot up. Touch the clothesline. German suplex. No breeds. Just dumps the Rhino on the back of his head. Rhino is stood. He's stood. But he's still up and ready to fight. But for how long? Awesome was going to awesome bomb the Rhino for that table at ringside. Rhino escaped once. Will he escape again? Oh my God! He did not. Judge Jones. 